Hi there, and welcome to a very special episode of the Praying Christian Women podcast. I am Jamie Hampton, and I'm here with Julie Watson, who is an author and blogger, a certified health coach and life coach, and founder of the TrueHealthLife.com, where she is passionate about helping others create greater health and wellness. Welcome, Julie, to the podcast. Hi, Jamie. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, today we actually are going to have two separate interviews with Julie. Um, we are, I just loved so much of what she has to offer um, that I, I really saw an opportunity for two separate podcast episodes. So um, today we're just going to kind of get to know Julie and we're going to talk specifically about the role of prayer in her own journey through fear and loss, because I know there's probably not a single one of us that can't relate to fear and loss. And we want to just um, talk with you today, Julie, about your own journey um, and just how, um, how you were able to push past that fear to live out a love relationship with God. Um, so I think we're just going to jump right in. Um, so Julie, can you just tell our listeners a little bit about your own journey, your story of um, how you were forced to confront what really had to be one of your own worst fears in 2009. Yes. Um, so in um, 2009, my uh, then husband, Josh, was uh, at the age of 33 years old, diagnosed with lymphoma cancer. Um, and I remember it was the day before our 11th anniversary so um, that was kind of a somber <laughs> anniversary that year, to be sure. Um, and I just remember, you know, leaving the doctor's office and just really feeling numb. I mean, this couldn't be real. This couldn't really be happening to us, could it? And our ride home was pretty silent. I think we were both just trying to absorb everything. And I remember getting home and when we were um, getting out of the car and I was walking into the garage, I remember thinking, okay, God. I trust you. Um, but at that time, I think my trust looked like expecting him to heal Josh, um, expecting that everything was going to be okay in the end, everything was going to go back to normal. Yeah. And I think that's, yeah, I think we can all relate to that as when those things happen, you do just kind of, that's that's the hope and the kind of direction I think that our that our trust takes is kind of trusting mm -hmm. in the yes and not necessarily um, understanding or or welcoming either course, you know, either either course that that things right. take. So yeah, right. I think we need to. Um, I think we probably need that for ourselves um, emotionally, mentally, just to have that positivity to cling on to. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I definitely started out the journey that way. <laughs> so when you were at that place of not knowing, um, what were your conversations with God like? Um, did, you, did you have these regular conversations or were you just kind of in survival mode? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I grew up in a Christian home, uh, definitely, um, you know, prayer life was something that was a regular thing for me, um, talking to God. But um, during that specific time where, you know, we were dealing with the diagnosis and his treatments, um, I remember for probably, um, well, you know how we were saying that you, you want to hold out that hope. So I did keep praying with this expectation for probably at least the first year um, that Josh was going to be healed. Um, you know, we had a large church family. We had a lot of support there. We had uh, you know, a lot of um, family and friends praying for us. And um, so during that time, you know, the expectation is just God is not going to let him die because we're believers and God's going to use this as an example to show other people how when you're faithful, <laughs> you know, God turns it into something good in the end, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so I definitely kept praying during that time. But uh, my prayers were not very intimate with God. I think I had this fear that if I did totally get vulnerable with God, totally, you know, open up and allow him to touch me in that prayer time that I was just going to totally fall apart. And so during that time, I really was praying more with my head than with my heart. And um, we went, we did actually go through a period of time where um, Josh wound up in remission and we thought we beat the cancer. 
Uh, but then as the chemo treatments, um, you know, it came back full force, it was even more aggressive than what it had been initially. And um, we started running out of options. Um, harsher and harsher chemo treatments uh, were used and with no um, positive response from the cancer. Um, his heart was really getting damaged from the radiation um, both times that he endured. Um, and so uh, when we kind of were getting to that point where we were, we were running out of options, it's when I really um, started having that realistic knowing that he was not going to make it through. And I would say that at that time, um, my, my prayer life was probably even less intimate and very much more in my head uh, because I, I felt like at that time I had to kind of hold my family together. And again, if I got too vulnerable with God, if I you know, allowed him to touch me in those places that really hurt, I wasn't going to be able to stay, stay strong for my family. That was, that was the way I thought about it in my head. <laughs> Yeah. And I think we do like, and I think that's okay. You know, I just feel like, like we need to give ourselves permission to be, uh, for our prayer lives, not to be cookie cutter, you know, yeah. during these tremendously, um, taxing times. I, I, you know, God knows he designed us. He knows he probably built that survival mode into us, you know, and I think just giving ourselves permission not to have this picture perfect prayer life. Um, and even to give ourselves permission to not know how to pray. I mean, I just think of that scripture that talks about, you know, that the spirit intercedes with groans too deep for words. I mean, there are times when I think you just have to be and, and, you know, remain open to God, but just to be and just let that pain be your prayer or let that, uh, let your tears be your prayers, you know? And um, I know that, right. I, that has to be so hard. Right. I remember at that time um, that I don't, I think it was still a pretty new song. I remember hearing it a lot on the radio, but um, a Broken Hallelujah by Amy Grant mm -hmm. um, and just talking about how sometimes that is, you know, more music to God's ears than having the perfect <laughs> song. And um, even though I was having a hard time just, you know, being completely vulnerable and getting out of the headspace to try to hold myself together, I remember thinking um, during that time, that song was a real comfort to me to hear that, like, it doesn't have to always look really pretty mm -hmm. um, the way that we talk to him. So as, as it became clear that his condition was terminal, um, did you, were you able to, to get to a place of being able to pray or were there just these times uh, that you just could not pray? Um, I, I did pray, um, but it was definitely more of a, you know, talking at God yeah, right. <laughs> and, and not talking with him again for that fear of right. being too vulnerable and, and, you know, losing control of things or perceived control of things. Um, I remember somebody mentioning to me, I had a, I had a website where I was keeping friends and family informed on what was happening with us. Mm -hmm. It was really nice to have that instead of having to, um, you know, retell the story over and over to everyone to update. I could just post it in one place and everyone who was subscribed would get a notification of what was happening. And one of the, one of my friends um, posted a, a note in there about how she knew someone that was going through a challenging time and just that she prayed every day for grace just to get through that day. And so that's what I, I would do. Um, again, it was kind of that praying app, but it was God, please just give me what I need to make it through today. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did continue to pray, but, um, still very much in my head, very much just, you know, don't give me too much. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just kind of still praying at a distance. Um, and what for, from a different angle, just from the perspective of, um, of, you know, many people will relate to walking through the fear and loss, but mm -hmm. from the other side of it, what were things that encouraged you so that, you know, all of us, as we walk on the other side of it with others that are walking through fear and loss, what was helpful to you and what was not in terms of, you know, people giving you encouragement or were there things that were the opposite of encouraging in terms of people 
maybe holding you to a standard of, well, you just need to pray more or have more faith. Um, what were the helpful things versus the things that weren't so helpful during that time? Um, I think just knowing that someone, that people are there. I remember, um, and this was after he passed, um, one of my best friends called, and I'm going to try not to cry while I say this, <laughs> um, but she called and, um, you know, I could see her calling and I just couldn't talk. I just didn't want to talk to anybody. And she just left a message and she said, I just am letting you know, I'm still here. Whenever you want to talk, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And I think that just means so much, um, to know that there's, there are people there, even if, you know, so if, if you're a friend, don't give up. Um, don't feel like you're just being pushed away. If, if, the person who is struggling is, is having trouble communicating with you, just continue to be there. Um, I, I feel like I did have a pretty good uh, support uh, from, from friends and family, from, from the church. Um, so I can't think of a lot to say, you know, don't do this. <laughs> but the one thing that was hard for me is, was being at church and, um, you know, maybe kind of being out in the fellowship area. And when someone was kind of uh, making their way across the room and they were going to come walk past me, but then turning in to avoid because they weren't sure what to say. Yeah. Um, I totally understand it. And I knew in my head that, you know, that totally made sense. Um, and I think people are afraid they're going to make it worse, but really it's already bad and it's already on your mind. So <laughs> if somebody asks you how you're doing, it's not like all of a sudden you're going to think about the hard stuff. <laughs> Yeah, um, but I do remember those moments sticking out in my mind that it, it was difficult um, to feel like um, you know you were being avoided because people didn't know how to handle you. Yeah, that is that's really good advice because I know there are times when you there are no words and you know I suppose you could go to someone and say you know there just are no words and just give them a hug. <laughs> yeah, and or just yeah. say I'm praying for you or how can I pray for you? Yeah, um, yeah, and and that. You know, to be honest, a lot of what people said to me, I probably couldn't even tell you, hmm. but knowing that they were there um, just meant the world. So even if you don't feel like you have the right words to say, what you say may not even be remembered later, mm -hmm. <laughs> but your presence and your support will be. Yeah. Well, that is, yeah, that's definitely good to keep in mind. Um, so after your husband passed away, um, there must have just been a lot of, I mean, it just seems silly to even say it. There just must have been tremendous uncertainty yeah. and fear just in your own life because, you know, you're in survival mode while you're caring for your husband. But then there's just what next? And um, how did you handle that? And how did you move forward after that? Yes, I was married pretty young. <laughs> I was 21. <laughs> and, you know, we grew up together. and he did everything. Um, so there were, it was, I mean, even just from being alone to the little things like not knowing how to use a lawnmower or, <laughs> yeah. or check the oil in our cars. I mean, everything was new and it just felt overwhelming. There was so much that I, that he just handled that I didn't even know how to do. Um, and so uh, definitely found my place you know, in addition to all the grieving and all of the emotional things that come with it, um, just even on a functional level, it was very difficult to be in that place, really overwhelming. Um, and at first, I tried really hard to do it in my own strength. <laughs> I thought if I just focus on the future and I keep moving forward, um, that's what I needed to do. I needed to be strong for my daughter. I didn't want her to see me falling apart and laying in bed day after day. She needed to know that there's hope, that we, that we move forward. But we're going to be okay. Um, but by doing that, um, it still kept me really in my head about God. And instead of letting him provide for me, I was trying to do everything on my own. Um, I even, uh, you know, started dating again before I was ready. And I thought that, you know, that was my way of being strong and moving forward. And I think really I was looking for support in that way instead of going to God to be my husband during that time. Mm-hmm. Um, I also threw myself into running, you know, physical running as a way to literally outrun my grief. Um, and I got to a point where I just emotionally and physically uh, came to a halt. Um, I had, you know, been dealing with so much emotionally that, or I should say not dealing with so much emotionally, which does 
uh, affect you emotionally. Yeah. Because <laughs> you kind of get to that point where you have to deal with it. Um, and physically, you know, I was putting so much wear and tear on my body. I was training for marathons. Um, I just really got exhausted emotionally and physically. And um, it was in that place where I finally reached out to God. And I finally started leaning on him. And the funny thing is I didn't fall apart in the way that I always worried I would if I let him touch my heart. <laughs> yeah. And instead it was just um, tremendously healing to be in that place with him and to be alone with him. Because I, I clung to that, um, you know, when I was dating before I was ready, I actually was in a relationship for a couple of years that really was not good for me or my daughter. Um, not that it was abusive or anything like that. It just was not the right fit and it was very stressful. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my biggest fear was, was being alone, but it wasn't until I was totally alone and I said, okay, God, it's you and me now that I was able to start healing and start um, recovering my health. And it was my prayer life did definitely change then from being in my head to being in my heart. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one thing that was really helpful for me during that time um, is uh, visualization with my prayer. So instead of feeling like I can't be alone, I need it. I need someone to lean on. I would, I remember sitting on my couch and um, I would sit sideways and then kind of, you know, just lean um, my body against the back of the couch and imagine that I was leaning up against God. Mm -hmm. And if I needed to cry, I would cry on him <laughs> um, and just really allow him to be that, you know, that provider, that protector, that lover <laughs> for me. Um, and that was really powerful. Wow. That is, that is powerful. Um, did you find that moving forward that you had to, um, did you have anger toward God at all or disappointment in what you, you know, that he, that you felt that he failed to, um, to deliver, you know, to deliver yeah. healing or to deliver what you had hoped and what you had trusted in for so long. Was there a, a forgiveness phase that you had to go through before you could get to that place? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I remember before, before Josh's passing thinking, you know, kind of in that, um, when I wasn't really praying out of my heart and I was praying out of my head, I remember thinking, okay, you can't question why I may never know why I just have to trust. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, but after he passed and as some of those, um, you know, kind of barriers around my heart started coming down. Oh yes. I got angry with him. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. I got angry with him. And, and the great thing is that he can handle it. Um, yes. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't make us less Christian or anything like that. Um, and he understands it. I mean, he lost his son. Um, yeah. yeah. He's not a God that can identify with our emotions, that's for sure. Um, and I'm trying to remember if I fully, did I fully answer your question? You did. I'm just curious, what were those prayers like? Um, if you can remember at this point, like were, were you um, speaking out loud to him? Were you just kind of, you know, expressing that disappointment? Did you write write it down or how did those prayer how did you process that just practically speaking for anyone that's struggling with that now right um i i have i'm trying to remember when i started doing this i think i started doing this when um josh was sick but i started journaling my prayers mm -hmm. and so um, those moments when I got very real and angry with God, I wrote it down with tears streaming down my face, yelling with <laughs> exclamation marks on the paper. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't, I don't know if maybe writing it down was just a, a good way for me to get it out um, and have it, you know, get it out of my body and, and you know, get it externally where I could look at it. Mm -hmm. um, but another thing that I do um, I like to write my prayers because it's such a great history to go back and look at. And so um, I also, you know, after I say my piece, <laughs> I also wait to hear what God places on my heart. And I jot that down too. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's been really good to go back. And, you know, it's so amazing because 
I know it's not me writing it. I mean, I'm, I'm writing it down, but I know that the words didn't come from me because a lot of it is just, it's so much wiser than I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I like, I know this didn't come from me. This came <laughs> from someone who knows what he's talking about. <laughs> um, but writing has been really, really helpful for me. That's, with, that with is great. Course. So what would you say? I just, I still love this visualization. So were there, are there any other, um, visualization techniques that you used in your prayers other than I just I've never heard of that before just leaning against something and just picturing leaning against God mm -hmm. um, I actually woke up one morning from and I, we were going through a, a hard time and I woke up and I had had a dream that I was that Jesus was kind of like that we I was on a beach and and this person that I knew was Jesus um, was was kind of leaning on the sand and I was leaning up against him like that and I just I still go back to that feeling in my mind sometimes when I need comfort um, are there other visualization kind of things that you incorporated into your prayers like that or was that kind of the main thing um, I liked I did like having that um, I did like having kind of the tactile uh, you know leaning against the couch mm -hmm. because then it it made it feel like I was supported as well as, you know, envis envisioning that I was leaning against him. Yeah. But uh, I've actually had one of the beach, um, you know, the beach is the place that I go back to <laughs> often in my prayers. Yeah. Um, and I just imagine that he and I are walking along the shore. The beach has always been a place for me. That's, um, that is uh, very calming. The, you know, I told you that Josh was diagnosed the day before our anniversary and we had a trip to the beach planned. And so I remember sitting that next morning, sitting in our hotel room while he was still sleeping with the windows open and just listening to the sound of the waves. Um, but I do envision that walking along the beach with Jesus and I'll, I'll envision holding his hand to me. There's something about that, um, touching him, um, you know, envisioning touching him, whether it's holding his hand or leaning up against his chest and crying, you know, whatever it is, um, that's very healing. And so, um, that has been another visualization being on the beach with him. That's been pretty powerful for me. Well, what would you say? Um, now I want to touch on, we're going to, so just for listeners, I, I did say we're going to have another um, interview with Julie where we're actually going to talk in great detail about, um, about, the connection between our physical health and spiritual health and kind of what she does at the true health life and um but i do want to touch on what you were saying earlier about throwing yourself into running because it's kind of funny that you know you think of running and health as mm -hmm. being a positive thing but you <laughs> said it actually totally drained you because right. you were pouring yourself into it for the wrong reasons and in the wrong way um so but that is part of how you moved forward right. um in dealing with that fear and loss is moving forward in a healthy way the right way. So could you talk a little bit about that, how that physical moving forward kind of partnered with that spiritual moving forward? How did, how did those go hand in hand for you? Yeah, um, I definitely think it was a good practice to pick up. I actually started running a little bit more seriously when he was sick and it was really great for an emotional release for me because you have, you know, all of these uh, pent up emotions and worries and fears. And I didn't want to burden him with those. So it was really good for me to just have space to get out and process. Um, plus running gives you that high. I mean, a lot of types of movement, you know, they give you that high where um, it just is a way to, to kind of put your body in a more positive place. Um, but I did take it to an unhealthy level. <laughs> so it's not a bad thing. Um, absolutely not. And I love forms of movement where you can get out and get that space. Um, being in nature is very healing for us. Um, getting away from, you know, um, maybe the stale air and all of the toxic things that can be inside of buildings and homes, you know, with air fresheners and things like that. Um, so being outside can be really good, whether you're walking, whether you're running, whether you get your yoga mat outside <laughs> and do some movement that way. Um, but yeah, those are definitely, um, and another thing that I love about that, um, is that you can connect to God. I have a lot of conversations with him while I'm running. So not only is it great for you physically, it just gives you that mental and emotional space um, 
you know, to process, to talk to him. So I found that to be very helpful. So what, um, what advice would you give for somebody that might be in a position right now um, where fear or loss have made it seem totally impossible for them to pray? Hmm. I would say um, it's okay. God knows your heart. And like you and I were saying earlier, um, prayer doesn't have to look a certain way. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I know for me, I was in my head a lot and I think maybe I just had to be to survive what I, what I went through. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think God, God knows that and he understands it. Um, one thing that was really helpful for me, even if I couldn't pray was to cling to his promises. Mm -hmm. So, um, even when I had a hard time just you know, completely being vulnerable with him or coming to him for what I needed. Um, I had a verse that I clung to uh, and it was again, another, um, another friend had sent this through the message board when I was sending out notifications on, on Josh's health and it's Isaiah 41 10, which says, uh, so do not fear for I'm with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And, um, so that can be really helpful too. maybe you, maybe you can't pray, but you can still stand on his promise. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a verse that you can find that you can keep on a note card with you to look at throughout the day or memorize. So, um, I would say that's, that's something I would recommend. <laughs> yeah, no, that's very helpful. Well, before we leave, you just have left us with so much good stuff and I just, I appreciate you going back. I know it had to be difficult walking through this again and you know and these emotions but thank you so much because I know it's definitely going to bless listeners that are going through this same thing um, but could you give us an update on your life now your family and um, your website and where to connect yeah. with you online yeah um, God is good <laughs> I keep thinking of that phrase you know beauty from ashes and yeah. I really feel like um, God has brought me through so much. I mean, I still have so much to learn and I still have, I know that there are no, you know, limits to how deep we can go in our relationship with God. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about, mm -hmm. about him. Like there's, there's always more. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I thank him for bringing me here. Um, I did get remarried in 2016 to my husband, Tyler. And between us, we have five kids. So I had a daughter before, and I gained four great step kids, um, all of whom are teenagers right now. So that's <laughs> been really interesting. Uh, yeah, and it's different. It's different um, marrying the second time around with children. Um, it definitely you have to be more intentional about um, the focusing time on your marriage because uh, you don't just have all the time that you want. <laughs> yes. So, um, and I really feel like the place where we live, you know, I mentioned um, to you before uh, we started recording that, you know, I live in the country now and I just feel like God has brought me to a place um, where I, you know, I can just be more at peace. Um, I really feel like this, even this space where I live, the property that we live on just feels very healing. Um, so I thank God for that. Um, and also just for my husband, <laughs> I know I, um, even though God had brought me a long way. Um, I still had and still have healing to do. And Tyler has just been great and very supportive. And I think he's definitely been a big part of um, that healing journey for me. So, so things are good. <laughs> now you said also you have some interesting animals in your, oh, yeah. what kind of animals <laughs> do you have? So we have a small herd of Scottish Highlander cows. Um, they are, if you aren't sure what they, they are, maybe you've seen these before. They, um, they have the short little legs. They're not real tall, and they're very hairy. Um, and they have, the, uh, they have very long horns. Um, so, and it's kind of interesting because the horns kind of go all different ways. Each cow kind of has a different style to her horns. But, um, so we do have a small herd of those. Um, we also have chickens on the property, and um, we have a cat and a dog. So... Uh, lots of life happening out here. <laughs> that is so neat. So, Julie, if our listeners want to find you, where where are you located in cyberspace? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can find me on my website, which is thetruehealthlife.com. I am also on Instagram at true.health.life, and I'm also on Facebook at 
the true health life. And before we leave, um, how can we be praying for you? I'm going to close with prayer. And how can we be praying for you? Um, this is a really sweet question. Thank you. <laughs> um, I would just have asked for continued growth personally. Um, and also in my marriage and my family, um, you know, it isn't easy to blend families and especially after experiencing loss. Now my daughter mm -hmm. still works through things. She was very close to her dad. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so prayers, prayers for all of that, for us to continue to grow and strengthen in all of our relationships. That would be wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you again, Julie, for being here with us. And we are very excited to talk with you again uh, after um, after we record this, we're going to be recording our next interview and, and you guys will be able to hear it in two weeks from now. So we're excited to do that. So let me close with prayer. Um, God, we just thank you so much for this time to talk with Julie and just to acknowledge that there are times when our prayer lives don't look perfect. Father, I just lift up anyone out there right now that is going through fear and loss. Um, that you would just touch them right now, Lord, right where they are, that you would allow them to open their hearts to you. And just in the way that only you can, God, that you would just just heal and minister to, to each individual right where she needs it. Um, we lift up Julie and her family to you, God. We just thank you that you are a redeemer. God, you are, a, um, you are such a great God who gives us immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. I thank you for Julie's new family. Um, we just lift up her marriage and just pray that you would continue to strengthen it and deepen it. We pray for her children, um, just for her daughter um, as she continues to process loss as well as embracing a new family. And um, we just pray that you would just give her an extra measure of of grace and um, just your goodness. And we pray for, for the other four kids as well, that you would continue to help them to grow and develop and um, just for her entire family to gel and to become stronger and stronger as time goes on. And we lift up Julie personally, just that you would continue to help her to grow and, and just to pour into her as she pours out to others in her ministry, in her business, and in every aspect of her life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us at the Praying Christian Women podcast. You can find more prayer resources at prayingchristianwomen.com or email us at connect at prayingchristianwomen.com. The Praying Christian Women podcast, changing the world one prayer at a time.